I spent $4,000 on a meta Dark Magician deck. Oh, this was so stupid. What's up guys, we're back with another video. Today I have done probably the stupidest thing I've ever done. I spent $4,000 on a meta Dark Magician deck. And when I say meta, I mean a deck that's not very good. It's not very competitive. Maybe it could beat a deck once out of 10 tries. It is not good. Not only did we do that, we spent $4,000 on everything in this deck. At one time I spent $2,200 on TCG player to buy some of these cards. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys when I receive them in the mail. We're gonna check out the conditions. Some of them are a little disappointing. And then I'm gonna show you guys the deck. Let me know if this is the worst decision I've ever made because I did buy some cards that may or may not have gotten reprinted in Brothers of Legend. Before we get into the video, we do have a giveaway. I'll be giving away these three cards. This is an LOB-EN Dark Hole. All you have to do is like this video, be subscribed, and let me know what your favorite card from the deck is or maybe what you would add or take away from the deck. Okay, we have a few packages to check out for our Dark Magician deck, and we're going to do it just like last time. We're going to have a few packages. They're going to come at different times. Let's see what we got here. I have no idea because I bought so many things at once. We have the Soul Servants. I believe, I can't remember if I bought a playset. I tried to buy playsets if I could, but sometimes obviously it is not available. Okay, it was like a sealable bag, but they attached the seal to the top loader. That was unnecessary, I feel like. All these should be near mint first edition okay looks pretty good that looks really good actually and this one looks good and this one looks good so far so good we are three cards in and we have had some pretty nice conditions i mean those look like they came right out of the pack that's good to see Ooh, red eyes fusion yes i did spend like 40 dollars a piece on these which is a terrible idea i'm sure they'll get reprinted i'm pretty sure they weren't announced in gold series with verte and dragoon but i'm pretty sure they weren't announced there but i figure they'll get reprinted and this will tank but i had to get the first edition super rare i didn't want to play a common because if you get the commons they're like a dollar so i could have saved a lot of money probably should have but the red eyes fusion super just looks so much better so far nothing Nothing to complain about and i am okay i'm totally okay with having nothing to complain about that is totally cool with me hopefully we won't have to but the chances are unlikely since we did buy a ton of stuff from tcg player it's a lot of different sellers i bought from some unverified sellers too so i, I went a little risky let's see sometimes they do have much better prices though 2.99 i wish it was 2.9 it was like 40 dollars <laughs> All right, second copy of the Red Eyes Fusion. Very nice, very good. Front looks good, back looks. I mean, that's yeah, okay, it's not great to be honest. It does have that stuff, that, kind of like the Imperms we got last time, uh, yeah, which you don't love to see, but not the worst. It still looks fairly decent. If I was selling this, I would probably list it lightly played because I wouldn't want the buyer to be like, oh, this isn't really the near mint I was looking for. So I'd probably list this at light play myself. That one was slightly disappointing, but not the worst thing ever. Here's a pretty big one, guys. Let's hope the condition on this one's pretty nice ultimate rare to half the name is gone excuse me half the name is gone all right let's see what the rest looks like uh that might have been nice to know half the name being gone from the card you guys will have to let me know in the comments does half the name being gone matter towards condition also can you play a card like this like if the card is missing part of the name can you play the card in like a tournament i'm not sure i feel like you should be able to there's sometimes weird rules like if it's like bend or something like that then you can't play it all right so that's a little bit strange that there's a little bit of a thing on the back i think that's it's just the indent of the ultimate rare but yeah that's that's strange i'm gonna have to ask some of you guys probably on twitter check me out at ruxon 34 i am not sure if this is fan mail but we're gonna check it out inside we have a bubble mailer i think this is part of the deck so they, they put in a token in there which is pretty cool actually so we have a ycs token which is really cool i've never seen one of those and then we've got two ultimate rare cosmic cyclones that i got I had a couple copies of the Cyclone, but it wasn't Ultimate Rare, and I was like, you know what? Let's get some Cyclones. Let's see. We have front appears to be pretty nice. Back appears to be, there's a little bit of scratching on there, but not terrible, I guess. So overall, pretty good on that one. There's a little bit of scratching on the back, but overall pretty good. Let's check out this second Cyclone, see if it's better, worse, the same as the other one. Front looks to be very nice. I mean, that looks absolutely incredible. And then the back appears to be, there's a little bit of a scuff right in the middle, but about the same as the other one. Still pretty good. Can't really complain about this one. The texture on this thing, man, this thing feels incredible and looks incredible we're back with more mail for the dark magician deck so let's see what is inside of these these are all untracked packages they're probably going to be the cheaper 
stuff that we bought. All right, we have, ooh, Eternal Souls. Yeah, these are actually really cheap, which is pretty nice because they're secret rares from, it's the one with like three different decks or something like that. So these were like under a dollar each, which was really nice. Let's see, the back looks pretty good. Because I think these were actually the cheapest cards. Okay, that one does not look as good, but they're so cheap, it's not really a big deal. Yeah, that one. <laughs> if this was more than a $1 card, I would maybe care, but it's very cheap, so it's not a big deal. And then this one is pretty nice. Okay, so two out of three were pretty good. Next one, what will be inside? I think there might be some Monjus in here too, which are for a GOAT format deck, not uh, actually for this part, but we need those as well. All right, we have the Wing Pegasus at Ignister. This was another one that was very cheap. It was not a very expensive card. I think it was under a dollar as well. It might actually been the cheapest card. It might have been under the Eternal Souls. So that looks pretty good. What card is it? I mean, what's what in the world is that? Wait. Oh yeah, Near Mint. I don't even know what that is. All right, great. Not the best start in terms of condition. So let's hope that it'll get a little better as we go. We have our Summon Limits. So we got Summon Limits actually being reprinted in gold, but the Ultra Rares are pretty nice. So I'll, I'll decide what I want later. All right, back looks pretty good on both of those those look very good still have three more for this session okay we have an engage here this card is actually not that expensive i think do i think it's only at one right now so that's probably why it's not crazy expensive but it's a pretty good card um and with the mini sky striker package that's in the deck uh, it's pretty good. Um, there's a little cut right there. Yeah, this one's not in the best condition, but it, it's not too expensive, so that's fine. Engage, pretty cool. Let's see what's in this one. This is a very small envelope here. We have Called by the Grave. This is a nice card. Let's see if we can... Okay, it's not actually taped. It just was sitting in a top loader that used to have tape on it. Mega 10 2019 promo, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe it was just in the tent. Oh, wait, is this bent? And there's a huge scratch on the back. Man, the conditions are not fantastic today. They're pretty bad, actually. The front and has something on it what is that i don't know what that is it looks like right there it's a little this way and then there's a scuff on it this one is i mean this is light play at best for sure but then you can see that i mean honestly this is this is not great this is not great unfortunately not the best not the best these low value cards are more likely to be missed i mean it's easy to miss stuff when you're packing up a bunch of orders so i understand here are the magician's rods these are actually really nice cards i really like the super rares for these two all right, first one, this is from the Dark Illusion. So these are from the original Dark Magician set. When Dark Magician got all that support, Blue Eyes got all that support in those back-to-back -back sets. The first one looked pretty decent. Second one does have that crap up there from not being double-sleeved. And this one does have some stuff on the back. Yeah, not the best, but uh, yeah, this is what I expect. And okay, man, I love how this card looks though. It looks really nice. Is that card bent? It looks like it's bent, honestly, like right there. Got something right there as well. Let's see if we can get that off. Sort of got that off. Yeah, that card's definitely like thumb. It looks like it got thumb thumb bent up there. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, man. Not a great run there. We have a few more packages. We are getting close to having everything that I ordered for this deck. So let's see what we have in here. I think one of these is a really big one. Okay, here is the third Red Eyes Fusion. Let's check this thing out and see how the condition looks. We have Super Rare. The Super Rare looks so much nicer than the common, to be honest. And the back looks to be... Wait, is there something on there? Maybe a little bit of scuffing on there, but not really a big deal. So a pretty nice card. I'm pretty excited about having the triple Super Rare copies, even though they did cost 40 times more than the commons. <laughs> Next package, let's see what this one is. So a lot of these are pretty small, but one of these has the most expensive cards we bought in the whole deck. So hopefully we will see those soon. We have the Elder Entity Intis. I'm not sure exactly how to say that. Let's see how the condition looks on these. There are two of these, both in the same sleeve, which I don't necessarily love. Oh my goodness. There's literally cuts in it. Uh, that's unfortunate. All right. They're not that expensive, so I'm not going crazy, but they are like seven, eight dollars. So that's a little bit unfortunate. This one looks a lot better. So that first one, probably not near mint, but they're only like six, seven bucks. I'm not going to worry too much about it. This card's actually kind of lit because you just send it to the graveyard with a bunch of the cards you have, and then you can just pop a card on the field, which is actually really good. That's kind of the main purpose of this card. Next up, another one. We have gotten almost every card. I'm really excited for this. Oh, here we go. An ultimate rare Sky Striker Ace Kigari. I think inside there's two Sky Striker cards. Kaina? Kaina? How do we say that in the Kagari? Let's see how the condition is. Both supposed to be near mint. Ultimate rares from OTS. Let's see the back. Looks pretty good overall. I'm happy with that one. And then we have the second one. I think the Kagari is much more expensive. This one's more like a $30 card. Kagari was like $180 or something. I used to have two of those and I sold them, of course. Missed out on that. This actually happens often with the OTS ultis. For some reason, there's just these big streaks down the borders. It's kind of annoying. That, that does not count against the, the card, I would say. All right, so those look pretty good. Three more in this round. And I think 
almost everything is here. This is the Sky Striker Mecha Hornet drones. Yeah, so our mini Sky Striker package that we have in the deck is completely here. I think we have two Link monsters. Then we've got Engage. We've got the Hornet drones. And that might be it. I think that's all of them, to be honest. Okay, this is just a super rare. What's this even from? It's from uh, Dasa, which is, I can't remember. It, it's a it's a core set, I think. All right, Sky Striker Mecha Hornet Drones. Very good. So we got this. Looks pretty nice condition. Another envelope here. Let's see what it is. It is a Nightmare Phoenix super rare. Very cool. We finally got the card out. It is an ultra rare Nightmare Phoenix. That tape was absolutely awful. Let's see what it's looking like. So pretty nice. Um, it's from the Megatons and looks to be in mint condition. So very nice. And the final package. This may be the final package of the video because there's only a couple things left and they're not like super important. I think one's Verte, which is being reprinted. So now it's like less valuable. But this is a huge one. We have six cards, I believe, in here. So let's see what they are. First, we have Magician's Souls. Oh, we're going to have to cut all these open. The tape is everywhere. I finally got these untaped and all that stuff. Let's see. So we have Magician Souls, which is a very expensive card. And the main reason is it has never been reprinted. It was in Legendary Duelist, and those Legendary Duelist cards just keep going up until they get a reprint. This will go down a ton when it gets reprinted in Legendary Duelist 3, but I wanted to have the deck, so I took the L on buying these for like $157 each, which is absolutely insane. They're probably going to go down under 100 once they get a reprint. Definitely under 100 because it's going to be a secret and it's going to look incredible. But this card is so good in the deck so you have to have it it's really good I mean, you don't have to but if you want to play the best possible way you need this card it's a very nice card so we got one we got two it appeared the first one was in decent condition so that's good here's our second one this one looks pretty good pretty nice condition so that's good to see wait what is that corner it's got a little bit of white but it's fine it scared me a little bit i thought it was completely messed up and then we have our third copy because you do play three copies of this 157 dollars card so the, a chunk of this deck's value is in these and it's going to lose it as soon as it gets reprinted so i wouldn't recommend buying this specific card because the reprint is really going to hurt the value. However, it's a really nice card, and now I have a playset, which is really cool. So far, so good on the conditions there. Then we have Ultimate Rare, Droll and Lockbird. These all came from the same person on TCG Player. So, so far, they've done pretty well with the conditions. Let's see about the Droll. This is a very nice card, Ultimate Rare. OTS, what is it, 8, I think? Yeah. I never pulled this. I opened a lot of OTS 8, but I did not pull this card. So, let's see what it's looking like. It's looking pretty nice. And for this card, I feel a lot better about buying this card because even with the reprint this is still the ulti is probably going to be the highest rarity with those they get reprinted into secret rares they're much cheaper it kind of lowers the value this is such a good card in the meta and it goes in and out of formats it just depends ultimate rare high rarity of a hand trap that's really good i think has solid future value which is why i didn't mind spending i think it was like a hundred and maybe like 70 bucks a pop or something it was a lot but i feel pretty good about their future potential however this one does have a little nick at the top which is unfortunate let's see about the rest of it uh rest of it's pretty nice so yeah it does have a little whitening but honestly this card's still in pretty good condition so not too mad about that and then the final copy three joel and lockbirds these aren't even like main deck cards for the deck they're side deck cards but honestly the side deck's really important if you do actually use play in a real tournament and also these could go in different decks as well so it, it was also like a double whammy i could use it in the dark magician deck i could use it in a different deck all that stuff i really felt good about these ultimate rare staples that i bought like the cosmic cyclones the terraforming it's not necessarily a staple but it comes into a lot of decks and then stuff like joel and lockbirds i felt really strong about spending a lot on those kind of like when i bought those two effect veilers for the blue eyes deck i spent about 400 dollars on them and recently after a buyout they're up to 760 dollars and that's in a short time so i think they'll come down a little bit but just buying those staples that people use all the time in high rarity seems to be a good investment overall plus you get to use and flex an awesome deck we're back with more pieces of the dark magician deck we are slowly getting there it has taken quite a while for some of these to get here it's amazing the difference between some uh tcg player sellers and others some get you your order there in like two days and some take like two or three weeks. Obviously, some of that is, of course, the mail and it's not their fault, but you can tell some of them don't even ship it for like three days. But of course, sometimes if you're super busy, like you have two full business days to actually ship it, but some people are able to get it out super quick, which is always awesome. We have all of these shoved into one sleeve and one toppler. Not my favorite when they do that, but let's see what it is. So, oh, I actually already had this card and for some reason I bought it anyway. So I don't actually need this one. <laughs> then we have the two artifact Lancia. Secret Rare, I think, is the actual highest rare which is really cool. This card looks to be in very nice condition though, even though they were all in the same sleeve. Let's see if the second one is as well. Very nice. And back looks awesome. I love to see that. This card looks really good. Very nice. Nothing to worry about in terms of condition here. First edition, Secret Rare Lancias. We got a couple more. I don't remember. I think there's a few cards we still need. There's a couple that I did not order because I have Megatons coming. I have one in Deer Server. I need two more, but I do have 10 
bins that I can open and get them. Here is the uh, Preta Plant Verite that we bought before it got reprinted. So we spent like 60 something dollars and it has crashed down to 45, I think, or 40, something like that. So hopefully it's at least in nice shape because we did pay a premium on this thing, but that's okay. That is totally okay. Sometimes you buy stuff and it gets reprinted. And that's why I like to buy highest rarity, like ultimate rares, because if there is a reprint, the value is the most safe of those high rarity ultimate rares, collector rares, starlight rare, stuff like that. So if this had been in like an ultimate rare, the value would be okay. But because it's just an ultra rare, the gold rare actually threatens the high rarity. A lot of people don't like the gold rare, but even that is lowering the price. So just being an ultra rare is probably not the best buy. This and Dragoon are definitely not safe in terms of keeping the value up and Magician Soul, stuff like that. All right, two dark magic circles. I only had, I think, ultra rares. So the secret rare is an upgrade. I really like these. I think they look absolutely awesome. That's nice. The condition, like there's a small dimple there, but that is nothing to fret about. Very nice looking card on the first one. Let's check the second one out. Second one, we have another secret rare. Man, the secret rare looks so good. All right, there's a little bit of something going here. I don't really feel great about that. Let's see if it goes to the front. Oh, it does go through the front. Oh, okay. That's not good. That could have easily been missed. I wouldn't necessarily blame the seller. I could see myself glancing over this as I was selling something, but that is unfortunate because that definitely makes it uh, not near mint with a big dent in the middle. We'll see. We'll see. I don't remember how much these cost. I think they were kind of expensive, so I'll check. If it's actually worth returning, I'll consider it. But on honestly, if it's like $10 or less, then I won't. We have finally received the last two cards for the Dark Magician deck. So let's see if they're in good condition. Let's check out the first one. Man, these took a long time compared to the other ones, but that is okay. Hopefully they're in good shape. That's all we really care about at this point. So we have a Secret Village of the Spellcasters first edition from Crossroads of Chaos. Let's see what this thing's looking like. So it is supposed to be near mint. Card looks to be... Oh my goodness! Near mint, huh? All right, this one might be getting sent back. This is like terrible. This is... Look at this. Looks like somebody got on the concrete and just went... <laughs> yeah, that's one of the worst ones yet. I knew the seller, and I suspected this might happen. So, uh, yeah, we're probably going to return that $30 card. Took forever to get here. And then it's in that condition. So, a little disappointing. That's okay. The last package here. I'm not sure. Can you open this like this? Oh. Oh, okay. No top loader, huh? So, I guess this is the top loader. The fact that it's in cardboard. Interesting. Interesting, to say the least. This is a very cheap card, so it's not a big deal, but man. They put like a tracking number on there or something, but it wasn't actually a tracking number. And I was just so confused by this whole order, but this one looks a lot better than the, the spellcasters did. Okay, now that we have seen all the cards that we received, I have every card except for one, I think, Access Code Talker. We're going to show you guys everything else we have. Simo actually sent me a video of a deck profile, which is where I got most of this deck from. I changed it up a little bit. First of all, we're playing two Dark Magician. We're only playing two because... Three ends up being a little bit bricky anyway. You can usually get to it pretty easily with some other cards. I have this Dark Magician Girl that I was going to sell, and then I realized I needed a Dark Magician Girl for this deck. So I kept it. It's the Dual Terminal Rarity. Pretty cool. Then we have the Unlimited LOB Red Eyes. Yeah, if I went hard and got like a first edition Red Eyes, then this would be a lot more expensive. I could just use my BGS9, you know, play a slab in my deck. That would be easy. Then here's the biggest miss of the deck. We have three Magician Souls. I spent $158 each on these. Yeah, $158. Go look at the price now because it has crashed since it got reprinted in Brothers. I thought they were going to reprint this in Legendary Duelist Season 3, but instead they went ahead and did it in Brothers, so it crushed the value of these, but that is okay. I accepted it. We take an L on this, but it's a very, very good card for the deck. You have to have it, so that's why I bought it. I was like, I want to play. I want to have the deck to play, and if they reprint it eventually, that's fine. Came a little earlier than I expected, but whatever. Then we have three Magician's Rod. I absolutely love this card. I think it looks really, really nice. Just a really good card in the deck. You can add a Spell and Trap that lists Dark Magician, so it's just really good. So we have the three Magician's Rod, which is really cool. Then we get into the weird stuff. We play two Dogmatica cards. We got the Ecclesia and then this guy. We're just going to call him the Knighted because it's a little bit of a weird name, but these cards are both very good. And while they are not Dark Magician, they work out pretty well because they are Spellcasters and we do have that secret vill village of the Spellcasters in the side. We also play Dogmatica Punishment, which is super good. So there's a lot of good synergies with that, just like good cards in general you can throw in there. It's not actually Dark Magician, but it's really cool. And then we get into the hand traps. So we have the two effect veilers so i have ultimate rare here and then super rare i got this after i got my other deck because i bought two starlights for the blue eyes deck so i threw these in here and use these instead and then we've got three ash blossoms we pulled two of these on a live stream and then we've got one gold rare because that's all we have left so these are the hand traps if i had actually bought like highest rarity like starlights and then first editions here it would have been more expensive 
And then for our spells, we got three of the legendary red eyes fusion. This is another one that took a big hit because I bought the first edition super rares because they were the only foil print and they reprinted in brothers of legend. So it's probably going to be way down because I think they made it a super in there as well. Pretty nice to have the original uh, first edition super rare. We've got the magician salvation from the 10. This card's actually pretty good because you can set eternal soul from your deck. If you bring back a dark magician, you can bring back a dark magician girl as well, which is why you play that in here. Also, you play dark magician girl because of soul servant. Soul servant gives you a pot of greed from the graveyard. It's really good. You play three of them. I don't think they actually reprinted this, did they? Maybe we actually saved some value there because they are not having the Legendary Duel of Season 3, I assume, because they just reprinted it. Maybe they will. That one should still be decent. And then we've got two Dark Magical Circles. Beautiful looking card. Just really good because you can banish when you summon the Dark Magician. Then we have three Nadir's Servant, which you guys saw me open a whole, like, three, four cases to get these. This is just a really good card, so that's why you play, like, that mini Dogmatic Engine. Pretty nice. We've got a couple of Sky Striker cards. They just work well with the extra deck. So there's only a couple of them. So we got Engage, which can turn into a one-card draw, which is nice. And then you got this, which you can go into a Link Monster. Then we've got Call by the Grave, which is just a good card in general. For the traps, you got two Dogmatic Punishment, really strong. We got an Ultimate Rare Imperm that we pulled. We didn't get another one. We did have a third Secret Rare, though, first edition, which is cool. Then the Eternal Souls are like the cheapest card in the deck. They're like $1, but they look great as Secret Rare, so it was nice that something was cheap. Then should all Schism is in here, so the extra deck kind of works out with that. And then one Skill Drain. Then for the extra deck, we have Access Code Talker. Okay, we don't have him yet, but we're, we're opening gold tomorrow, so we should pull at least one because we're opening three cases. So that will be this because we don't have one. Then we have the Nightmare Phoenix. We've got Selene which is a pretty good card for the spellcasters. These go with our Sky Striker cards. Link Spider, I actually already had this card, which was nice. We got the Artemis. I already had this one too. I think I got it out of the collection, so nice. We got the Predator Plant, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon getting reprinted, but as a Starlight, we're hopefully going to replace this with a Starlight. It'd be nice. Elder Entity Intis, or however you say this card, is crazy. You just get to pop a monster when you ditch it with Dogmatic of Punishment or Nadir Servants. It's really good. Then we've got our El Shadal options from our Schism. We got the Titanic Clad. It's got a second effect when you pitch it, and so does this Ignister. A lot of options there in the extra deck. And Axis Scope of course is crazy which uh you know we don't have him yet but we will then the side deck this actually was really expensive because i went crazy on the side deck all like the decent staples i figured if i'm gonna have these staples it doesn't have to be just for this deck it can be for any deck so i'm just gonna get like all the highest rarities so i got the artifact lancias these weren't too expensive actually which i mean they look great for how cheap they were three ulti droll and lockbirds i went a little crazy here but i figured this card's really good let's get them terraforming you guys saw this on twitter uh, it, it's missing part of the name which was odd so ulti there we got a couple of cyclone ultimate rares for ben droplet we pulled this i didn't buy it I, there's actually supposed to be a second one of these but i did not buy another one because brothers reprinted it so we're just going to pull another one and then there's the feather duster i already had this so i didn't upgrade it this you guys saw a uh, bad condition unfortunately summon limit they reprinted this in gold as well so i did have a common maybe we'll replace that with a gold version the side deck was crazy expensive and there is the deck we spent four thousand dollars on what i am hoping is that a lot of these cards can hold their value so we're not losing like a crazy amount of money spending four thousand dollars on it because like the ghost rare dark magician is going to age well some of these ultimate rare staples are going to age well I'm just happy to have the deck. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play with. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Shout out to TCG, Trusted Cards, Tone, Fo Show, Tomato Juice, Noah J, Hawaiian Yu-Gi-Oh, Stanley, Mike, Nancy, Mimby, Gecko. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.